Welcome to the first game of the second league. We are on the play and the starting hand is great. So the first thing I see is um, two sleep crest fairies. I want to get both of them out and I'm not always sure if I should play this on curve. So I would say it really depends on what deck the opponent is playing. If I draw up a Sleep Cursed Fairy in the second turn and try to keep open the Fatal Push. Or if I go for playing on curve and keep mana open for the Spell Stutter and have a third land drop for the Sleep Cursed Fairy in turn 3. And in this case I have no clue what the opponent is playing. Let's just roll with the counter spell because better safe than sorry. And even if it does not hit something, we still have the picklock prankster with his free the fate. Yeah, Sunken Citadel is interesting. I have not seen this card before. It can produce two blue mana right now, so I'm thinking something like Lotus Control maybe? Or Lotus Combo? They could use the mana for Thespian stage. But let's see where this is going. Okay, blue white pathway. And nothing else. They just passed the turn, so let's free some fairies. Okay, discontinuity. So we are definitely playing against some form of Lotus shenanigans here. Another land I have never seen before. Ah, uh, and it's just a castle Avendale. Aden, Avendale, Aven? The White Castle. Okay, nothing to do, but with the good old Sleep Cursed, we still have a mana sink. Of course I pay the two life for the watery grave, so I can have the mana for a spell stutter and untap the other sleep cursed fairy. Okay, this is... yeah, this will get countered, so... okay. Ah, oh, the little Sleep Cursed Fairy is just so good. She protects herself. We can't untap her. All for one mana. 3-3 three, three flying. I couldn't have wished for a better fairy. I'm just so happy with her. Also now, the opponent does nothing. Let's just untap her twice. The next thing is, often opponents remember the bar 2 and forget about the untap. Or the other way around. They remember the untap and forget about the bar too. It's just so much text on a one drop. Okay, let's focus on the match again. So, we untap the sleep cursed, we are going to attack for six, and we still have spell stutter up. Couldn't be happier. I 
feel like the opponent is just missing green mana or something like that. So I'm really happy to draw the Ego Drain here because I'm really curious what the opponent is playing. They don't want to show. Okay, that's fair. Well, some things are already obvious, like Mystical Dispute, Dumping Sphere. I think the most important thing in matches like this is just not to overboard. Just board the things you are really sure of uh, that they are good. Like, for example, I have seen enough so I could think of my opponent having Teferi or Wandering Emperor in his deck. So I think I could board Noxious Grasp with a clear conscience, but then still, if I'm wrong here and my opponent is playing Lotus Combo, uh, and they don't have any Planeswalkers in it, that would just mean I bought it wrong, and maybe I have dead cards in hand, where I wouldn't have a problem if I just didn't board them. So from what I have seen, I'm quite sure I will not need the Fatal Push, and I also boarded out one Fairy Fencing. Yeah, two Sleep Cursed Fairies went well in the first game, so no problem to keep this. Also, maybe the Dumping Sphere can get interesting. Also, I already like to see the line of play like Sleep Cursed Fairy into turn 2, Thoughtseize Sleep Cursed Fairy. So, Hollowed Fountain, Otavara. I don't feel like this is Lotus Combo. I really feel like this is a control deck. Well, let's see. I'm curious. And yeah. There is the Wandering Emperor. Farewell and Temporary Lockdown. The Temporary Lockdown is going to be a problem against the Sleep Cursed Fairies. But we could have still taken the Wandering Emperor or something like that. So that's the reason why I like to play Thoughtseize first before I uh, cast the Sleep Cursed Fairy. Because I can still decide not to cast the Sleep Cursed Fairy. But now in this case, I could hit the temporary lockdown, I don't expect another one, so um, I expect the farewell to come down in turn 6. And I hope until then I have made so much damage that Sheldred or uh, Renke can do the rest. And it was absolutely right to get rid of the fairy fencing and the fatal pushes. Well, the opponent has a shark typhoon, but I don't think we have a reason to get rid of the shark. I really like the fairy dream thief. He is doing such a great job to protect us from bad draws. I guess Shark Typhoon into Wandering Emperor is not going to make the cut here. Uh, so the next thing I expect is uh, the Memory Deluge, because I think they are going to search for another temporary lockdown, or they hope to find the mana maybe for the Farewell. But I don't think I'm going to see the Farewell in this matchup. And another Thoughtseize. Whew.
I really hoped that I could just take away the memory deluge so the opponent isn't able to filter his deck for another temporal lockdown. Yeah, at this point the Tail's End could be a problem because they can counter either Rankle or the Shieldred, but also the Wandering Emperor could be a problem against Rankle, and I feel like the Wandering Emperor is making a worse situation than the Tail's End when they just counter it. So let's take the Wandering Emperor away. The dumping sphere really doesn't make a difference, so I'm just leaving the mana open to untap my sleep cursed. So we can attack for 7 damage in the next turn. If we find the land, that will be 10 damage with Rankle. But Rankle will be countered from the tail's end, so 7 damage it is. Nothing else to do, so let's just untap the sleep cursed. And the mana for Rankle comes tapped. Wait a second. Now, while thinking about Dumping Sphere, I have just realized what the land from the opponent is doing here. What's it called? Sunken Citadel. I am pretty sure they can use the mana to channel uh, stuff like uh, Otavara and Aiganyo, and if they play Field of Ruin, they can play turn 2 Field of Ruin. Hey, that's kind of strong. So I think the next time when I see a Sunken Citadel dropped on blue, I can be pretty sure that's a Sorius control. Well, at least next to a white mana. <laughs> but I think there are not many decks that can play stuff like uh, Field of Ruin or these channel lands right now. I am pretty sure Rankle will just get countered. Also, I can see 4 untapped mana. That means I'm already having that fear of... Uh, what's it called? Yeah, settle the wreckage. In that case, I would be pretty happy to have a mystical dispute in my hand. So, let's attack first.
okay, at this point, this play decides the game. So if I let Memory Deluge resolve, uh, they are able to find something like Supreme Verdict, maybe. And that would maybe cost me the game, so I will counter it. When they go into their turn, they can play the other Memory Deluge, but at that point they don't have the mana for... Okay, they found Supreme Verdict. That's unfortunate, but we still have Rankle to handle the situation. So we can... We could possibly bring him down to one, but it's enough to attack for two times. If they don't have removal, it's game at this point. Um, I want to communicate that I have another spell like Mystical Dispute, so I think it's enough if I just let the blue mana open. And this is exactly the moment where I realize I should have just kept the swamp on my hand. So I could discard with Frankel now. But I don't think this is a game-altering decision, so I think I can forgive myself that misplay. I am really happy with the idea that even when they have another Supreme Verdict, I can play Shieldred in the next turn. And when they go into their turn, I think they just have to draw a card. I don't think they have something um, at instant speed to remove Shieldred. Yeah, so that's a great start in this league. Thank you for watching. And see you next time.